Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Tammy Ernest and I am a long arm quilter and here on my channel I like to share customer finishes as well as my own personal projects. So today we're going to do an unboxing of the Sew Sampler Box for May and then I have some updates on my Calico Garden Quilt Along and then we have some customer finishes that we're going to go over. So let's start with the unboxing. So each month when I receive this uh, Sew Sampler Box in the mail I like to open it up and share with you the goodies that I get inside of it. There's always fun things, new tools, um, some replacements of other tools that have um, worn out and always a lot of fun fabric. So let's open up the box from May. When you open up the box on the top, there's always a uh, little insert on the top and on the back, the back of that insert is always a great coupon. And this month it is 20% off um, a pre-cut, certain pre-cuts, and uh, so I'll be saving that coupon. And then inside, let me show you the inside when you get it, um, just all kinds of fun things. So little notions and little tools, there's always some sort of a pre-cut fabric, and this month it is, and there's always this cute little card that explains everything in there. So for May, we have the fruit cocktail line from Fig Tree Quilts. Let me just go ahead and untie it. I've seen this showcased on different things and I don't have any of my own yet. So, a bright blue on the top. And so very summery color palette. That same print in a red. And then a larger scale, the blues and the reds. This looks very similar to another fabric that I did with the um, uh, with the Bliss quilt along. So a lot of um, Joanna's colorways will match together from her different lines are very similar. So very summery print. There's some cherries on that one, different colorways with the cherries. That looks similar to one she's done in the past bright blue. I like the blues. Very um, gives a feel of a patriotic and then you throw in some orange and that gives you the summery feel. But a, um, I'd say it's a royal blue and then here is uh, more of a baby blue, a little brighter baby blue, a lime color. Then the yellow, a pale yellow. She's used this colorway in a lot of her other fabric lines. And then the orange. So um, very fruity. And then here's a stripe print. It's a pale green with the blue stripes, almost like a ticking. And then there's a green colorway, the very last one. Really pretty. So this is not a, this is a junior layer cake. So smaller than a regular layer cake. It doesn't say how many pieces. I'm assuming there's 20. In there that would be my guess and then inside the sew sampler box there's always a pattern that you can use the pre-cut for and this month it is um, me mi casa Spanish casa I know means house I think it's me I'm not a Spanish I was a French major <laughs> not major I wasn't even a major <laughs> no I took French in high school that's as far as it went um, but I'm always a sucker for houses. So it's a cute house, 58 by 58 pattern. So the house is in the middle and then you have the starburst around with all the different uh, fabrics. This would require another two plus yards of the background. So a white of some sort and then a binding and obviously a backing, um, but you can make that. And I also, uh, if you're part of the Sew Sampler box and you make the um, quilt that is in the box each month, Fat Quarter Shop does have a finishing kit on their website. So if you would go in to, I know the May one's not up yet, but previous months, you can go in and it'll have um, put together with the coordinating fabrics that they send in the box. It would be the um, backing fabric and the binding fabric so that you can have your whole quilt coordinated and it's really a, a pretty good price so if you're finishing any of these and don't have other plans if you are making the actual quilt that's in the box then you can get that finishing kit from fat quarter shop 
So those are the fabric and the pattern for this month. And then inside, we have some other um, things. Here is some thread, two spools of Mettler thread. So the spools, you have a cream color and a white color, and these are just sample sizes of them. Mettler is um, a high quality thread that you can sew with. This is a 50 weight, 100% cotton thread. It does say silk finish. Um, a trusted brand in the world. There are two neutral hues. Like I said, you have a cream and a white. Now I sew on my sewing machine, I sew with Aurifil. So I buy large cones of, of Aurifil and I keep that on there. So I will not be using this on my sewing machine. What I do with these, when I get these little sample ones, is I keep these in my binding bag. And I brought along my binding bag so I could show you. This is just a canvas bag. This actually came in one of the sew sampler uh, boxes probably a couple years ago. Uh, just a cute bag. I think this is still available. If so, I'll link it down below. It's a good size, cute little bag. So this is what I call my binding bag. I keep, so when I'm ready to do a binding on a quilt, all I have to do is grab this bag and it has everything in it that I would need. So let me show you. Um, right now I have a sample um, this was another Mettler thread. My scissors are stuck, okay. This is another Mettler thread that came in a box and I have just kept it in here. And so I, this is what I'll do my binding with, unless, and this is a white color, unless it won't blend well, say I'm doing a dark binding and a dark quilt um, backing fabric, then I may change to a different color. But almost always, I hide my backing stitches, my binding stitches on the back. I don't like to see my binding stitches. So I'm pretty good at uh, hiding it. You don't even see the stitches when I finish. So using a white thread almost always works. And so I have that in my binding bag. I have um, just a pair of scissors. I have some beeswax just in case I need to condition the end of my thread just to get it uh, the, through the needle. Obviously I gotta have some glasses, <laughs> some readers. These are Lori Holt readers. Keep those in my bag. Let's see what else. I have a little notebook and I have, um, this is a needle case. This is a magnetic needle case and so I keep different needles um, in there. What else do I have? I have other couple packages of needles. You know, it's a binding bag. You gotta have lots of needles. And I have um, a little tiny ruler if I need that. And then all the clanking you're hearing, a couple things. So when I am putting a binding on a quilt and I um, press the, the backing, let me get it straight, I press the binding towards the back and then I flip the quilt over and I'll actually press the binding around to the back side and then I'll use these um, little clips. These are Wonder Clips or there's a couple different brands. Wonder is a name brand. I know Fat Quarter Shop has their own little one and I keep these in a cup in my sewing room and as I'm uh, pressing down that binding then I will just clip these all the way around and so the ones that are in my binding bag are because as I was doing the binding and I would stitch that binding down, I would toss the binding clips into my bag. So these really need to be taken back upstairs and put in the cup that I have upstairs. And then the other thing I have in here are just, these are old spools, these are old bobbins. Um, I now almost always use pre-wound bobbins in my long arm machine, but what these are, are these are the uh, M, M size bobbin for my long arm machine. And before using pre-wound bobbins, I would wind my own bobbin. And so these are colors of thread that I have done in the bobbin before, and there's just a small amount left. And so I keep these in my binding bag so that if I'm doing a different color quilt, I have all different choices of thread color. And then I use these little ponytail holders, all different colors to wrap around my bind, my bobbin, to keep the thread from going everywhere. But then I put the appropriate color on there so that it helps me know what color. Now, not always do you have it perfect, um, but I try to do pretty close. So here is a light blue, and I've got a blue one on there. Um, here's
there's a green. And lo and behold, it is a green under there. So there's probably a dozen of those in here, all different, all different shades. This is more of a taupe, but I've got a white one on there just to give me an idea. So I don't have to search through every bobbin and I don't have to have threads all over the place. Now this one's totally off, but it's still, <laughs> it's a gray. You don't have too many gray ponytail holders, I guess. And then a black, and that's actually a black. So I still do have a set of um, M bobbins upstairs next to my long arm. So if I'm doing a quilt, um, like the one I showed last week that had the uh, wintergreen color that I was doing on the top of the quilt, and I put a wintergreen bobbin in, so I wound my own bobbins for those. So I have plenty of these upstairs as well. But I do keep those in my binding bag so that if I'm working on a different color, I have those right there and I don't have to go searching for them. So those are all the little goodies I have in my binding bag. This stays downstairs because I do all of my binding during family time. So whether we're um, in the evening when we're all together, if we're playing a game or if we're watching TV, I'll bring my binding projects down and I will work on those. And so I keep this bag down here. Binding is another one of those things I will take in the car with me if we're going to be traveling. Our church is a half hour away, so I've even been known to take of my binding in the car. I mean, a half hour there and half hour back, that's a whole hour worth of binding. So I can get a lot of stuff done that way. Um, but binding is one of those things I can do in the car. Um, cross stitch, not so much. So binding I can do. So this is a handy bag I keep right downstairs. I can grab any time that I'm getting ready to work on a binding. So these two spools that came in my sew sampler box, they are going in my binding bag. Perfect perfect little size for them and then I don't have to ever buy thread for my binding. I've always got something. All right, so the next little item in the sew sampler box. This is called the Sweet and Sharp Macaroon and I haven't taken this out of the box yet. What they say this is, it's magnetic so you can hold your needles um, on the top. It's very tiny so you can see in my fingers. This is like smaller than an Oreo. It'd be about the size, almost like a bottle cap type size. And it kind of looks what, what it looks like. They've um, done the mock-up kind of like a uh, macaroon. So the top is magnetic. Let me grab um, a couple needles out of my bag here. So you can see that the top is magnetic. So a good use for this might be sit next to your sewing machine or even, you know, I might even put this in my binding bag as well because it could hold on to needles. You know, if I'm working on binding, I can set this on the, the arm of the couch and I could set it right there and hold my needle while I'm cutting off new thread instead of holding it in my mouth. Now the other thing that this does is um, on the in-between here, it says it will sharpen and shine up your needles. So it's almost, um, I'm not sure what the material is inside there, but it will sharpen your needle so you can poke it in and pull it out all the way around and uh, sharpen those needles, shine them up. So I will not store my needles on here. I will take my needles, put those into my needle case because while they're in my bag, I don't want them to get knocked off. So I will store my needles in my needle case, but I can use this when, um, when I'm doing binding, I can set it next to me so that I don't set my needle down or I don't stick it in the couch, I've done that, or hold it in my mouth. So this too goes right into my binding bag. All right, and I wanted to show you another little thing that was in here. This one I've already taken out of the package. This is called a thread cutter pendant. And this is what the package looks like. And this is what the pendant looks like. So this has the thread cutters all the way around. You can see those little divots all, all around the edge of that. So it cuts your thread. So if you just slice it through there and it cuts your thread. Now, this can be worn either as a pendant. It's got the hole there. So like on this necklace that I'm wearing today, I could take this one off and I could put this one on and wear it as a pendant. You know, you could have a short one or a long one. 
You can wear it as a pendant. The other thing you can do with this is turn it the other way. And I have an old wooden spool here and you can set that inside the spool and then it becomes a decorative uh, thing. And so you can have this sitting next to your sewing machine. Um, again, I could put it in my binding bag so I can pull out something cute and I could just have it sitting there and I could cut my thread that way instead of having to look for scissors. I think that's cute. Um, I like the detail on it. It does say clover on it, but then you can see the cute flowers and the swirls on the front and the back. The back says it was made in Japan, but really cute. I would even wear this as a necklace. I think I could. Um, it wouldn't fit on this necklace. The eye of it was just a little too small for the size chain that I have right here. But I think it would be decorative as a, as a necklace too. I could see myself wearing this. Nobody has to know that it's my thread thing. Um, or you know what, I could just buy this, buy a separate um, necklace and put this on there and then whenever I am doing my bindings, I, or even when I'm sewing upstairs, it could be, then I would have it right there. Some ideas, I don't know. I kind of like the decorative part of it too. So that's in the box and I will link that down below. And then the next thing are some pretty nail files. Let me take these out of the package. These are from the Featherweight shop and I have noticed the last three or four boxes, they've been including something from the Featherweight shop. I'm, so I'm sure they've partnered with them um, each month there's been something from the featherweight shop. So the one says, oh, so pretty. And the other one just has the uh, featherweight shop logo on it. Nice big nail files. Really cute. All right, the last thing in the box this month is the pattern for the sew along the quilt along. So inside each box, starting last month, so in April was the first one of this current sew along. So um, in the sew sampler box each month you get a block of the month and this one started last month. So this is block number two and the whole theme is the pressed flowers and you can see the colorway are the roses and the pinks. This flower this month is called the hyacinth. So a different flower each month. So let me show you last month's block. This was the delphinium and then the hyacinth. Each one of these blocks finishes, I want to say 12 inches, 12 and a half in inches unfinished, 12 inches in the, uh, when it's in the quilt. So two blocks are out so far. On the website, on Fat Quarter Shop's website, they have the, this didn't print out the best, but they have the fi fabric requirements for the entire quilt along. So each block will show the quilts, the, the um, fabrics that you need and how much of each one. I mean, for this one, three and a half inch squares, two and a half inch squares, you know, that's what it's telling you. But here is if you were starting out with, um, you're wanting everything to coordinate, this is how much fabric of each one that you would need. So I printed this off because I have decided to do my colorway in pinks and browns, which is very similar. This is using the Bunny Hill designs. So you can see that it's, um, you know, the roses and the pinks. This is more of a gray, and I've decided to use brown. I'm trying to use as many fabrics from my stash that I can. And so looking at these fabric requirements, I'm not gonna have to buy too much, but let me show you some of the, the fabrics that I have picked out. These are all ones that were in, um, in my stash. Some of them were already together, and some of them I just pulled out to, um, to kind of coordinate with them. So let me show you my browns first. And you can print this off for yourself. If you don't get the sew sampler boxes, you can order just um, these blocks each month. I'm gonna say they're like five bucks for each one, um, but if you do rather do that than the whole box, you can do that. They're available each month as a separate pattern. Um, so this right here across the top are the fabric requirements for the blocks. And then for the finishing, which won't be until next year, these are the additional fabrics that you would need. Now let me see, 
they are different fabrics than what are listed up here. So they use even different ones for those. But for these, um, these over here are the grayish color ones that are on the blocks. All of these, you got a little more of your rosy ones and then your lighter pinks and then all the way up to um, a cream or a white on white tonal. So instead of the grays, I've picked out a couple of browns. And so I have these two different browns. This one I probably have probably two yards of this brown. And this one's probably, oh, it's only probably half a yard left. And I, I store my fabric on these comic boards. Um, I store my yardage on these comic boards. So anything that's more, you know, around a yard, just under a yard, two, three, four, five yards. If it gets more than that, then I store it in a different place because I consider those fabrics are ones that I would have enough to use for a backing. So this is not enough to use for a backing unless it'd be a very small quilt. But this is a brown, and this is the brown, two of the browns I've chosen. And I only, for the blocks, it says you only need like a half yard of, of two different grays. So I've got plenty of those. And then some of the pinks I have picked out. And these are just, they're scraps because they were in something else or I picked them up somewhere else. So these are in pieces, but that's not gonna matter for the block pattern because you're already cutting them into smaller pieces anyway. So there's one pink, here is another one. And I only need, I, I don't even need like half a yard or a fat quarter of um, some of these, so I have plenty of these. Here is another pink. This is a lighter pink. It's the same print as this more rosy one. I have a lighter pink there. I have, this one's a little different, but it does fit the colorway. It's got some green in there. I don't have very much of that, which is fine with me because it's not one that I really I'm overly thrilled with, but to cut into small pieces, I don't think it would be too bad. And that's, and I only have, you know, that much of it. So it won't be a prominent one, but it does kind of match the same pink colorway, so that one will work. I pulled out a couple of reproduction prints that I had just because they're the, kind of the same um, rosy color. That one's a little darker than those, but that might be nice. This is a, um, Civil War one too, but it's still um, the pink. I like those pinks all together. So that would be one, two, three, four, five, six. That's six one, six pinks, and they show one, two, three, four, five, six. I probably could get away with that. Those six, and then maybe one other, maybe another lighter brown here in case of this. I know on here that looks like. A white color, um, a print of some sort, but I know on one of these, yeah, on this one they show it here. This is the same stock number for this one, but it shows it more of a gray print. So I'm gonna go with, I think, more of a, a lighter brown color that would match those other browns. And like I said, this didn't print, it's a little blurry, a little easier to see on the website itself. So if you're interested. Now, I do need three and a half yards of that background print. And I have this whole thing of, this is white on white, no, cream. It's white on cream, I would say. Tonal prints. I don't even know where I picked this up. <laughs> but they're all different. But I like, I like this colorway with the pinks. They're kind of flowery. I like that they're not a stark white, but they have some pattern to them, so I do like this. And there are probably 20, oh, a good 20 strips there. These are two and a half inches wide, which are fine, except some of these blocks, like this one, I need a three and a half by six and a half inch rectangle of the um, background fabric. So what I'm thinking about doing is buying just a yard maybe of some other white tonal that would match these. I'm gonna take this with me. I'll be in town tomorrow, uh, stop at the quilt store and see if I can find some white tonal that'll match this color. Cause in my, I cannot believe, 
you can have a whole a whole room full of fabric and you still don't have the right color i just don't get that so i had some ones that were whiter than this i had some ones that were creamer than this but i didn't have any that were just this that would match so i think what i'm going to do is just get a, a yard of some other fabric that will match this anything that i need to cut that's two and a half or smaller i already have this down to that size anything that's larger than that three three and a half there was some four and a half inch squares then i can use the yardage for that so if i could make this whole thing you know and just purchase minimal fabric i'd be thrilled with that and so would my husband probably but uh so that's my goal that's my that's what i'm hoping anyway so let me hold these up so you can see them all together. These aren't, uh, these aren't so I have been wanting to make a pink and brown quilt for a long time. So I'm I'm excited about this. This only comes once a month. So I am I've got two blocks to do, but those won't take very long. Hopefully I'll have them done. I can show you next week if I can find um, the uh, another fabric to go along with those, but. Um, not intense it's only one block a month and i think i can keep up with that one so i'm excited to to get started on that give me a good reason to go to the quilt store tomorrow <laughs> i'm excited about that too um, but the press flower quilt along i will link these in the description below if you're interested in joining me in on those and um, i will try to have those first two blocks done for next week so we can see them we'll get the get the garden going here and that is the whole sew sampler box this month for the month of May. So a lot of fun, a lot of cute things. And uh, if you'd like to join me, I enjoy getting this each month. Um, it's a fun surprise in the mail and um, fun to do. So I'll link that below if you're interested in getting that as well. The next thing I have on my agenda is to show you my progress on my calico garden. So this is a quilt along with Lori Holt. Here is my binder. You can notice my binder is getting thinner and thinner. It is losing weight. <laughs> As I'm working on the blocks, all my fabric are cut and um, placed into the sleeves in here. So as I'm finishing up blocks, my binder is getting smaller. The actual quilt along will be done the first week of June in so I am still on, this week I finished blocks from May the 1st. So I'm a couple weeks behind still, but that's okay. I'm getting there. I'm just thrilled with how much I have kept up. But um, so three or four more weeks for me, just a couple more weeks for everybody else if you're keeping up with that. So there's my whole binder. If you're interested in how I keep everything organized for this, you can refer back, refer back to other videos where it says Calico Garden or it says Lori Holt and it'll show you some of my organization of my binder, how I keep all my notions, how I keep my fabrics, how I keep my finished blocks. It's all in some of those prior videos so you can go back and see those. So this week I worked on this garden sign right here and I worked on, where are they? I worked on the butterflies Oh, they're right next to the fruit basket. The butterflies and the snail. So right there. So let me show you how I, my progress on these. So here is the garden sign. Those letters are all pieced. This is not applique. So that was kind of a good change. We've been doing so much applique that it was nice just to sit and sew straight for a while. The letters actually came together very quickly. They are smaller pieces, you can see, um, but they really went together quickly. I did all of it in um, just an evening. So my tip with those is to keep all your pieces separate. I had mine all in different baggies, so I had all the G letters, the G pieces in a separate baggie, all the A pieces in a separate baggie. Lori did make some, some, um, some adjustments to a couple of the lengths in a few of them. So if you're making this, you follow along on her blog and the directions for making the garden sign and just take note of a few, um, there were three or four, two or three, something like that, um, changes in a couple of the sizes. Then you put on uh, a couple of small little borders around the sign itself. 
And then these are just um, easy corner triangles. You're putting on just the rectangle. That's probably a one and a half by two. And then you're putting on the easy corner triangles. And so that is your, each one finishes like that. And then you join those all together. Now the corner ones, um, let me show you. This one right here is just one square, one, it's a one and a half. That's probably, no, it may have been a one and a half. I think it was a one and a half, that gray charcoal color. And then this one I think was just a one inch square. It was put on the side or one and a, I don't know. I don't remember the exact measurements, but it was, it was small just to get that last little one around there. And then there's a couple little sashings on either side so that it fits into the quilt. Whoops. So it's coming together. I thought that was really cute. I like the words. It was kind of hard at first when you're laying it out going, how is this going to make an A? Or how is this going to make an, an E? And you got to make sure you spell it right. The first time I sewed the R and the D together, I had them backwards. Not backwards, I had the D. <laughs> had a gadrin instead of garden. Um, not a big deal. I saw it before I got very far. But make sure you spell it correctly. Then the next ones I worked on were the butterflies, and these are super cute. That is, the middle part is made with bias um, tape maker. You don't cut the, bind, the fabric on the bias, but you're just using that to get it to the size that you need. And the, le the leaves, the wings, this is one whole piece, so a heart shape and then a smaller heart shape down here. Very easy to turn. These came together really quickly. There's a pink one, and a purple one. There are some applique, hand applique that needs to be done. No, I don't know. Sometimes I'll do hand applique. Sometimes I'll just use my sewing machine. I'll need to look at the pattern and see how detailed I want to get. Sometimes I will just use a sewing machine. I'll use a very small zigzag stitch or some other thicker thing that I can use um, to make those antenna. And then you have little buttons that'll go on top. And I've talked about before, I will do the uh, embroidery before I do the long arming. I will not do the buttons until after I do the long arm on it. But I wanna do the embroidery because I want it to be stitched down with the rest of the quilt. So I haven't done any of the embroidery yet. I'll do all that at once so that I can just trace and then uh, work on that. So here's the yellow one. And you notice each one, uh, these two have the same backing, background fabric. But this one is the yellow chick one. And then the snail actually has a different one. Isn't he cute? He'll look even better once he gets his embroidery on. Um, but again, those shapes, this was like a I don't know, almost like a comma shape, and then you have the circle on top, but, but it's cute. So those four blocks, those again came together very quickly. They, they weren't too hard to do. I made a couple more of the Calico Star blocks. And you'll notice that these two have the center circle on them. So here, these are both pink ones and they both have the yellow chick print as their background fabric. And I've um, taken so much time to do these that I forget how to do them each time. So I have to go back to Lori's blog to where she talks about these to get to do the first one and the, oh yes, I remember now and then I'm able to do the next one. And they go together quickly, um, but I forget. It's been too long in between. So here's the first pink one. And this one is pink. Uh, with the red, uh, the red chick print. Actually, if you want to get the baskets right, I would do it this way. So that middle thing, this is an appliqued. Um, you can see from the back that it's actually a white square in the middle that matches this. And I guess if you didn't want to do the appliqued center, you could leave that. Just like, Then your block would be more like this. But that middle white s square is covered over by this. This is just a circle. You do the applique just like Lori um, with her um, interfacing, flip it inside out, press it, and then very quickly, 
I do machine applique and I do have a video where I show you how I do my machine applique. I use it with monofilament thread so I do not have to change thread colors when I am doing applique and I, I like that look. So those two are done and then because I finished those two and did those two circles I went back to all of the other star flowers that I had done and I added their center circles. It's the gray one and the blue. Now these yellow ones, oh, you put that brown center on it and it looks like a sunflower. I really like those. Then here's another blue one, a little darker blue. The circle does add a nice finishing touch to it, I think. And here's another sunflower one. So each one, even though I have like three that are in yellows, it's never the same mixture of fabrics. So you may have, you know, this chick print may be the same. No, chick print, that's the only place I use it on these. Um, and here you have the star print. And in this one, you have the star print, but now it's moved to this section of the flower and a different yellow with it. So even though I have three yellow flowers, they're all totally different. The color, the fabrics are different. Let me show you that first one. And so really in this one, the only print of the three that's the same is that star right there. It's the back one on here and it's the front pieces on here. I say back and front. They're not back and front, but to me they kinda, uh, the north, south, east, and west ones, they look like they're kind of standing out away from the rest of the flower. These petals almost look like they're in the background. They're not, but uh, the way the coloring is, it makes it look like it to me. And then I have another pink one. This one was finished already. I just put the circle. And then one more blue one. So of the 23, and these go all the way around the edge of the quilt, interspersed with some other flower blocks, um, but they go all the way around. Of the 23, I have seven, eight, nine of them done. So almost halfway done with those. So I'm making progress. I'm, it's, it's a fun quilt to do. So I have the girl done, the hollyhocks, um, I have the tomato, the bee skep, we have the wheelbarrow done. Maybe next week I'll go through, in the next coming weeks, I'll go through and show you all the blocks that I have finished. I still have this fruit basket to go. I think that's coming up for me. I have all the vegetables to go. The spools look really cute. I'm excited about working on those. Several of the flower ones around here I have done. I have the fencing done. Um, I don't have these vegetables done yet. I have the chickens made, but not applique onto there. My tools are all done, these, and there's another little set of tools here. My bees are done. So I have more done than I, than I don't have done. So um, it'll be cute, really cute. A lot of fun to finish up. So if you're working on this too, send me a message. I'd love to know that you're working on it. And um, put your pictures in the hashtag for um, Calico Garden so we can see each other's. They're, re they're really cute. A lot of fun to work on. So those are the projects I've been working on this week. Um, my own personal sewing projects. Now I have some customer quilts to go over. So I'm going to start with Sarah's quilt here at the top. I'll show you some pictures of it laid out so you can see the whole design. And then while you're looking at those, I'll pull it off of the ladder and we can talk about the details. So I am really excited about this quilt. Sarah is a member of the uh, Modern Quilt Guild in Indianapolis. 
And she made this quilt um, for a show that they have coming up in, over the summertime. So this will be hanging in their show. I'm really excited about that. So the um, qualifications to be entered into the show is you had to make a quilt using hand dyed fabrics. So because Sarah does not do her own hand dyed, she chose Allison Glass hand dyed fabrics. And these are available um, from Andover. And this pattern itself is called Pulsar Batiks. So you can see you have some that are a little lighter background with the darker um, crosses. Here's a lighter one with the darker, but then with the blue, you have the darker with the lighter and um, the pinks with the brown, the purples. So you can kind of see, I think these may be done with, um, with sun prints. I'm not quite sure of Allison's um, process. And then she's put um, the gray in the back. It's actually a print. Has little dots on it as well. Really cute. So back to these. These are batiks, um, and it's a nice way to use um, batiks that are kind of a little modern, and also to use them in quilts where you need a solid color, but you add some dimension with, um, you know, it it reads as a solid, but it adds some dimension to it. Really cute. This quilt pattern is called Orla, O-R-L-A, and it's from Kitchen Table Quilting. So I will link that, um, her link to her website down below so you can grab this pattern if you like. It comes in a paper pattern or a PDF. You can have it either, direct, either way. And let me look at the backing. And... I know I have the name of this backing fabric. I did not bring it with me. I will link it down below. This is actually a wide back, but the wide back was this direction. And I didn't like it that direction <laughs> because I felt, you know, especially hanging, this is going to be hanging um, the narrower part at the top, the longer part down the sides. I felt like the quilt went this away, this direction. Um, and especially with the pantograph, and I'll talk about that in just a minute. So when I did the back, I wanted the back oriented the same as the front. So to me, it looks like almost like Baptist fans, but with a more um, modern feel, pixelated type of um, hash lines, little stone prints, whatever you want to call those. I don't know. Um, but I felt like it was oriented this direction. So I loaded it on the long arm that way. There was plenty to do it that way. I didn't have a problem. Sarah gave me plenty of fabric. So I oriented it this way so that it was um, oriented the same as the quilt front. Just something to think about. And then the pantograph. This pantograph is called Cool Beans. This one is new to me, but it was so fun to stitch out. I like, um, we were looking for something that had a little bit of um, circle feel to it because the rest of it was so angular. We decided we wanted to soften it just a little bit, but to keep the modern feel. And I actually sent a picture of this quilt uh, to my business buddies and ask their suggestions. And this is one of the suggestions that Lindsay gave to me. And so I sent it off to Sarah and asked if she liked this one and she chose it. So there are other designs similar to this that are very boxy called modern squares or something like that, where it's still that random, you know, crossing over uh, almost like a maze or almost like uh, Pac-Man or something like that. This one's more rounded on the corners it was a good addition to this quilt because of the rest of it um, being on the angle and being very straight. This one, um, still modern feel, but it uh, rounded out some of those edges and uh, just was a good, a good complement to it without doing the same thing. This quilt would have been totally different look, really pretty too, if we would have done something that mimicked more of the angle of the pattern. We decided to go different and I think it adds a good dimension to it. This is done in 
uh, this is a medium gray thread to uh, blend in with the quilt top. And then the back is so busy that the medium, um, the gray, just blends right in. It's just texture. You don't really even see the color of the thread. This quilt is 56 by 70, so it's a very nice uh, throw size. And these are Sarah's colorways. I, about every quilt that I do for Sarah are these same colors, just different patterns, different um, fabric lines, but, but this is her, so pretty. So I'll be excited. I may have to go down and see that show just so I can see it hanging. All right, so this will go back to Sarah and she will be doing her own binding on this one. The next one, I have two quilts from Loretta and I'll let you look at the first one while I pull it down. So from the big pictures, you can tell that this is a panel um, cut into um, its different squares, and then it would help if I had it the right way. Cut into this, um, the panel is cut, and then some color coordinating borders are added around each block, and then the sashing is this cute, um, food print. You see the ice cream. Those are all ice cream cupcakes, ice cream sandwiches. Um, oh my. Hmm, really cute. And then around the outside edge, now this is the top of it. It's oriented to the quilt all the way around. So let me turn it this way. And you have another panel print, the long um, border one that is then cut and put around the edges. Now these are all different food trucks, and that's the name of this. Um, it's called the Food Trucks Panel. It's put out by P&B Textiles. I do not have a link for it. Um, you can look on Etsy or look in your uh, local quilt store, see if you can find. Um, I do not have a link for this one. So let me show you some of the, the uh, panel pieces up close. First, we'll start with the taco. The taco truck. Just so cute. And then the same truck here, the big one then is used on the edges. You can see how it's the same trucks, but now that they're lined up all in a row, like you would see them if you were at an event. But just so cute, so bright and colorful. Then we have the hot dog truck. You can see the roller coaster in the background, the, uh, the um, oh, merry-go-round, merry-go-round, carousel, um, the cat, ketchup and mustard, the menu, it's just so cute. Then you have another, then you have, um, let me show you the ice cream truck. All right, here is the ice cream truck, don't you love this pink truck? palm trees in the back, just so cute. And then the other panels are the menu boards for each one of those. So you have the hot dog menu board. Then here is a produce stand board. That's so fun. For a couple years, uh, my family and I, besides, mm, besides the pumpkins, we grew vegetables and we, um, we went to our local um, farmers markets and sold vegetables. That was a very busy couple of years, but it was fun. Good lessons for my kids. I tell you, very good lessons for my kids. So just a couple years that we did that. We had the pumpkin patch, and I've talked about that before. Uh, we had a, a small you pick pumpkin patch, just a couple acres, and we sold pumpkins from here. Um, families would come here, but then for two, two or three years, 
we used our opposite field that we were not growing pumpkins in to actually grow produce. So we would have obviously tomatoes, we're in Indiana, tomatoes, um, green beans, we grew, oh my goodness, lettuces and arugula and um, zucchini and carrots and radishes and all different kinds of things. And we succeed, we did succession planting. So like every couple weeks we would be planting more so that things continue to, um, to come on all through the summer instead of most people will plant their gardens in May. Everything comes on at the same time. You have your tomatoes, you have your green beans, they all come at once and you can them or put them up. In farmer's market gardening, you um, do succession planting. So we'll plant, you know, every couple weeks we're planting more green beans and um, lettuces we're continuing to plant. They do much better in the spring and in the fall than those hot summer months. But then we would, um, we would package those, we would clean everything, package them up and sell them at the farmer's markets. But they were very good lessons for my kids during that time. They were all teenagers at the time. They, um, they learned how you work hard <laughs> to take a product to market. You package it pleasingly. You have you set your pricing. You handle money. You talk to customers. Just the whole thing was very good for my kids. And they have used those lessons in the things that they have gone on to do. Um, when we finished with that, a couple of my daughters worked in a bakery. And actually where the bakery then went to food, uh, went to farmer's markets and sold their stuff. So because my girls already had that experience, the owners put them right into those positions. Um, and then just the whole handling customers and, and talking with people and being pleasant, handling interruptions or handling things that don't quite go your way. <laughs> you know, it's all, it was so good. So good. It was a good experience uh, for my kids. So, but just a lot of fun to look at a, a thing like this and to see all the, oh, it just brings back those days. So here is the ice cream menu board. Just really cute uh, quilt. This is just um, really, really cute. So I know there's a whole line. You can get the fabrics that have all of the smaller scales. You can get the fabrics that have um, the whole borders, you know, and then the words down here too. And then the different panel pieces that you, um, you can cut apart or do it however you want. This is the way Loretta put hers together. So for the pantograph, I chose the perfect pantograph. This pantograph is called Two Scoops. And is that not perfect for, for a pattern that has ice cream on it? So um, similar to other designs we've done, if you remember a couple weeks ago, I did a quilt with um, the wishbone pattern. And um, this is similar. The wishbone was, was all circles, so it would come up like this, and it was, um, you know, ovals back and forth. So the two scoops comes up just like that, except we're stopping and we're doing like an ice cream cone shape across the top. So these nest in together, and again, when you do it on the long arm, they will be separate rows, you know, this one, and then your next one will start. I, um, I nest them together so that this one comes way up inside of this one. You can see how this one is the line before it comes down and stitches here. When I do the next line coming through, um, I come way up into here so that it all nests together. Two Scoops, uh, I forgot to mention this. Two Scoops is a design by Crystal Smith and I purchased mine through Intelligent Quilting. That is a, um, a website that sells digital pantographs and that's where I got mine. Let me show you the backing. This is like a, a light blue, kind of a turquoise um, modeled print. And then you can see that two scoops pattern, really cute. And we did um, a cream color top and back, and it just blends in. But two scoops, I really like that one. There's certain quilts it just looks really good on. But when you find that perfect one, it just goes perfectly. So two scoops, intelligent quilting, that's a design by Crystal Smith. Let me back up and tell you that the Cool Beans one that we used on Sarah's quilt on that, um, the pantograph on that, 
I purchased mine through Urban Elements, and U-R-B-A-N Elements is E-L-E-M-E-N-T-Z. Lots and lots of designs on their website. Um, the design was actually done by Apricot Moon Designs, and I've done I've used a lot of hers, but that's available. I purchased mine through Urban Elements. It may be available other places too, but that's where I got mine. All right, so that is the food truck panel quilt. I just think this is adorable. So fun for summertime. This will be so pretty out on the out on the porch. So that's Loretta's first quilt. I'm going to pull the second one um, that's on the lower part down there. I'm going to pull that off while you look at some bigger pictures. All right, Loretta's second quilt. This is all batiks, and it's um, 75 by 94. This is a pretty large quilt. Um, it'd be nice on a twin size bed, a little small for a queen, but um, you know that nice big size. All batiks, all um, like a, a marble type feel to it. Really cute. Um, and you saw from the bigger pictures or from that laid out the diff the the pattern design on there. I'm not going to be able to show you that, but just an up close part. Um, all the pieces on this are fairly big. So even like the here, um, you know, this block here is probably a six by six. So fairly large. And then um, pretty big pieces you're working with. I don't know the name of the pattern but all greens and grays, some blues, um, marbly type of look on it. So the pantograph I chose on this one is called Woven Wind. You can see how one of them goes this direction and then the next one goes this direction, so back and forth. I did this one in a dark gray thread because the whole tone of the quilt was very dark as well. Woven Wind is by Apricot Moon Designs, um, just like the Cool Beans was, and um, I purchased mine through Urban Elements. Let me show you the backing fabric. This um, backing is um, a wide back, and this is from um, Stonehenge Essential 108 backings. There's a whole line of these all in different color shades. This one is in more of a green and black. And then you can see how um, this is a dark gray thread. And so for it to be, it hardly even shows up on this. It shows you how dark that backing fabric is. It's even hard to see the, the pantograph. You can see part of it right there. Very nice. This will be nice on a bed. Um, it's got a border all the way around. Very nice. So Loretta's gonna do all her own binding as well. So these will go back to her tomorrow. All right, I have um, three other quilts that I am going to videotape, but I cannot show them to you today. <laughs> so you're gonna have to stay tuned for a couple weeks um, these three quilts, one is a baby quilt and the other two are grandparents quilts. And I know the baby shower is coming up in a couple weeks and so I don't wanna show these just in case some of the family might watch the video. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna go ahead and videotape those, but I'm going to hold off on showing you those for a couple weeks. So you better stay tuned for those, I'll let you know. Um, so I think that's all for today and I'm working on some others. Always got other long arming projects going on and next week I'll be sharing my updates. Hopefully I'll have um, my pink or, or my uh, white on white fabric purchased and I'll have those first two blocks of the pressed flowers quilt along done. I am working on um, my scrappy spools for the month of May. I'll have those done for next week. And it is uh, Memorial Day this weekend, so I hope all of you um, will honor those 
that have um, gone before us and um, sacrificed their lives so that we have the freedoms that we have. Hope you have a great time with family if you're able to get together with family as well. And um, so those are the things I'll be working on this week. If you are in need of long arm quilting services, I'll put a link down below and uh, you can get the instructions on how to get your quilt to me and um, and I'd love to work on that for you. If I can be a help of any way, uh, let me know and I look forward to seeing you back here next week.